Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem is found in the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson six of the physics one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, so in order to ace this question, we have to have an understanding of pressure. And in particular, we have to understand Pascal's principle. Pascal is the one who taught us the idea that pressure equals force over area, because he said that when pressure is applied in a closed container, every side, every part of that container, every part of that surface area in there shares the force from the pressure equally. The pressure is spread out equally. You don't have one corner in the jar that's just getting a ton of force on it, a ton of pressure. In fact, every single part of that area gets it spread out equally. So let's go ahead then and talk about this example of an alveoli. This is a really interesting example to use. And the question talks about how this alveoli is filled with fluid. Someone started to drown. So they're filled with water and the doctor gives them a ventilator that's applying pressure. And of course, you know, water as a liquid, water is not compressible. It can't be compressed. And so this pressure is pushing in here. The water is not getting any smaller, of course. It's pressing on the water, filling up this space. So we're getting lots of pressure pressing on the alveoli here. Now remember, according to Pascal's principle, that pressure is going to be spread out evenly. We're not going to have one corner of the alveolus that's really taking a ton of pressure while everything else is just fine. That would be kind of silly, right? So Pascal's principle is the scientific way of saying that, and it's this idea that the pressure is getting spread out evenly. Now, for the other part of this question, it's a little bit trickier to understand unless you get into the math of it. It seems a little counterintuitive, perhaps. So we're going to use this equation here, which, of course, you know, it's the pressure equals force over area, kind of that classic equation they teach you in physics class. And essentially what we're going to do here is address the part of the question that asks, talks about what will happen to a larger alveolus. How is that going to compare? Well, sometimes when we're dealing with this, it can be helpful when we're manipulating an equation to get out of the abstract world and get into real numbers world. As long as we remember that, you know, those numbers are just numbers we're choosing. They're just arbitrary. Sometimes working with real numbers can help us get an idea of what's going on. So let's say we have two alveoli. The first one has a smaller area, smaller surface area in there. It's a smaller alveolus. Let's say it has a surface area of one because I love easy math. So we're going to say that's one. The larger alveolus is going to have a larger surface area, of course. And so let's just say it's two because, again, easy math is great. So we'll call that two just so we can get an idea of what's going on. Now, how is the pressure going to compare in these different alveoluses? Well, or how is the force going to compare? Excuse me. The pressure is the same. That's the idea is we're putting the same amount of pressure. So if the pressure is the same, how can we figure out how force compares? Well, let's do some algebra. Let's multiply both sides by the surface area. And we'll see that, in fact, this would be 1p or just p equals f. So f is equal to p, whereas here f is actually equal to, sorry, that is a horrible p. That's better. f is actually equal to 2p. So in this case, the force is actually much stronger, which is interesting. And we were able to use that just by understanding Pascal's law and by using that equation. Now let's go back to the answer and see what we can figure out. All right, so we are back and we're looking at the answer. It's in here somewhere. It's one of these. We just got to figure out which one it is. This is one of those problems where we've got to work through three different options, figure out which of these are true. Context we've already talked about. It's this context of the alveolus and the ventilator. So let's go through these different answer options. First off, number one, the alveoli will experience an equal amount of pressure on all sides. Well, that checks out. That's what we were talking about, about Pascal's principle. So that sounds right. The next one, if a larger alveolus experiences the same pressure as the others, it will experience a lesser force on its walls than the other alveoli will. Well, this is the tricky one that we talked about, but remember when we actually applied the equation to that, we found that the increased surface area in that larger alveolus actually meant that with the same pressure, it was getting greater force. So this is going to be incorrect. 
Finally, the water will compress as it experiences an increase in pressure within the alveoli. Now, this just has to do with the nature of a liquid. We know that a liquid, unlike a gas, is not going to compress, and so that water is not going to compress. That will be incorrect. So that means our correct answer should be the last answer here, one only. Let's check it out. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to look into our elite tutoring services and request a free phone consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. Great seeing you, and we'll see you next time.